today's video, which is long overdue, uh, one that's been in progress now for months, is about the light test. So traditionally the light test covers observing the amount of light that passes through a magic card to help determine if the card is legitimate or fake. The amount of light passed depends heavily on the light source. So basically you hold your card up to a bright light and you try to see through from the back to the front. And if you've got a really bright light source, it's no problem. It actually looks really cool. It's kind of like stained glass if you've got a big light source. Um, but if you've got a weak light, you really not, might not see anything. Now I've seen descriptions of the light test online where they say, hey, put the flashlight up to the back and if you see anything, then it's a fake card. Really, the, the key in all of this is to be able to compare the card in question with a legitimate card to see if the intensity of the light source differs. And you really want to be able to see through it. So I've got several flashlights here, several different light sources I'm going to go through in this video. So basically, I'm going to start with a quick rundown of the traditional light test, and then I'm going to go into a deep dive where I'm using a lux meter to try to determine some kind of quantitative numbers to go with this. So the key, like I said, is to have a consistent light source and to be able to run that light test on cards and know what kind of outcome you're expecting. Uh, so you need cards on hand to act as compares, and you also have to have had to have done this for a couple times. Um, one of the interesting things that came of the whole test where I was actually getting quantitative numbers is that the amount of light passing through a card depends on the set, and it also depends on the color of the card. The amount of text on the card really doesn't make a difference, although if you have several different printings of the card, the light that will pass through each one varies slightly, but it's usually not enough to be able to tell by eye. Anyway, you take the, the card and you put a light behind it and you look at the amount of light that passes through it. So you can take, we have two copies of Gamble here. One is legitimate, one is fake. And if you take a weak light source, well, that's probably a little too weak, but if you take a weak light source and you put it behind there, you're not going to see anything. Now, if the lights were out in the room, you might be more inclined to see something. So then let's step it up. Let's go to a brighter light source. And even with this brighter light source, not really seeing anything behind either one of these. And then let's step it up again. Let's go to an even brighter light source. So with the even brighter light source, now you can tell a big difference. Now you can see this one definitely has light. That one you see nothing. And if you want to, you can bring these right on top of each other and basically make them share a border. And then go behind it with the light source. And you can see a little clearer that there's no light passing through the fake, which is on the left. And whereas all the light passes through the legitimate card on the right. So if you have the same card, that's great. If you don't, like I said, cards from the same set and same color from the same set are very good proxies, pardon the term, to actually having the real card to compare those things. So there's a, there's a couple things other than light passing through these that you want to look for. One of the things that was interesting that I found is that there's different patterns to the actual printing of the card. So I'm going to go through those real quick. Uh, early sets through later sets have patterns that I'm calling faint grain. smooth grain, mini smooth grain, some grain, very slight grain. So basically those early sets you can see a, a little bit of like pigmentation to them. You, you can see a little bit of graininess to them. Some of them you really can't see any of that graininess and it just shows through really nicely. But around Tempest I started to see something I'm calling blotting grain. And then in Urza's Saga, I started to see some vertical lines in cards. By Odyssey, I saw what I was calling a snakeskin pattern. By Planar Chaos, I was seeing scales. And let's look at this. Eternal Masters cards, they actually look diseased. They, they've got a lot, a lot of like nastiness to them. Um, so I, I'm showing pictures of those as I'm talking, obviously. And... Uh, the, the interesting thing, of course, is if you have an earlier card, if you have an Ali from Cairo, and it has this blotting grain, or it has vertical lines, or, you know, it has a snakeskin look to it, it's fake. That's something that I didn't see with any of the earlier sets. Um, so it's not just a matter of light passing through it. You can also look at the, these grains, which I, I would like to do more tests on, but it took a long time to get all the data I have now, so it'd be cool to go back to that, but I haven't got the time. 
So let, let's go over some of these cards and look at them just one at a time with their traditional light test. So we're going to go with the intense light source. We're going to put it behind the card. And you can see it moving around behind the pirate ship and then I move it over to the time twister and nothing. Gamble I already did. Uh, again, like I said, if you have two cards from the same set, same color, it's a pretty good facsimile. So there is a very, very, very slight color coming through on the Berserk, but definitely when you compare it to the, the, the Dreads, definitely a huge difference. And the, this Berserk is from uh, one of the sellers where they claim 100% this will pass the light test. No, it, there's a little bit of light, but it's definitely a failure. And they've been trying for years to be able to pass the light test with the, these counterfeit cards, and they still haven't got it. Again, here's an authentic Ali from Cairo, fake Ali from Cairo. The authentic, wait for it to focus. See some light behind it, the fake one, whole lot of nothing. Uh, one of the sellers that was selling counterfeit cards, I said, what is your absolute best counterfeit card right now? What's something that'll pass the light test 100%? And they say, hey, I've got these packs of negation. I have had customers say nothing but good stuff. The funny thing, uh, th these are from a Chinese seller, but I actually bought them from an American seller, reselling in the Chinese seller stuff. I also bought some stuff from the Chinese seller. But so the Chinese sellers having their stuff and then other people are selling their crap which they didn't seem too happy about because they wanted to sell whole boxes of stuff instead of singles. Anyway, Pact of Negation. This uh, it has that kind of diseased pattern to it. Um, and then over here, nothing through the time shifted one. Modern Masters one has that diseased kind of look to it. So that, that is the basic light test. You look at the amount of light passing through, you look at the pattern of the light, and if it doesn't pass as much light through and... Mm, Every fake I've seen so far passes by not letting enough light through. Although I've heard there are fakes that let too much light through. Anyway, if it lets enough light through, if the pattern looks good, then it passes the light test. If it doesn't, then it fails. And just because, like I've said before, something passes a test, as in this case the light test, uh, it doesn't guarantee it's authentic. You should pack that up, back that up with other tests. Although in the case of the light test, I really haven't seen any cards that have passed the light test that aren't authentic. So I'm going to do a couple large uh, passes of the light test, just against the light in the room. And then we're going to move on to more of the deep dive of this. So the cool thing about actually holding these up to a light source is that you can see everything behind it. And it really has like a stained glass look. So in this first picture, I'm just holding a gamble up to a light in a dark room. It's just a 60 watt equivalent compact fluorescent light. And in the, the first picture that it's showing now, it's a legitimate gamble, and you just see everything through it, and it just looks, you know, nice. It looks beautiful. Uh, and what you're looking for here is the pattern. You're looking for, uh, like, patches of discoloration. Uh, that's something that I've heard you can see in reback cards. And, and you're just looking for, like, a uniform structure. And again, you're comparing a, a known authentic card with a counterfeit card. So in this next picture, this is the counterfeit one, and really there's no comparison here. It's just a black spot. So here's another card. This one is um, a counterfeit Pact of Negation. Again, the, the light that you're seeing is mostly just reflected light off of my hand or the card being at a slight angle. And then when you look compared to the actual Pact of Negation, it just has an entirely different look to it. It looks magic, the way that the, the lettering's coming through. But again, it has that, that same kind of uh, disease, snake skin kind of uh, pattern that I've been seeing with the Eternal Masters. Uh, here's the legitimate Ali from Cairo. Uh, light's coming through it nicely. And then when you look at the, the fake Ali from Cairo, again, no light's showing through the thing. Um, so there, there's a huge difference between the quality of these and what you're seeing and what you should expect to see. And again, comparing it to an authentic card, same set, same color, is kind of the key part of this test. Apologies for the low quality of this video, but this was my time-lapse camera and I just kind of wanted to show the process that I went through in order to get all the data on the amount of light passing through these cards, the amount of effort it takes. Uh, it was definitely a lot more than I was used to from the previous videos, especially with all the sets and all the individual singles that I had to go through, but it definitely gave me something to look at, something quantitative to look at while trying to evaluate the light test. 
So now it's time to get into the deep side, deep dive side of things. Uh, essentially, as with my other videos, I wanted to try to quantify the light test so you get an actual number that you can compare to in order to determine, hey, this card looks authentic or this card looks fake. And to that end, I used uh, a lux meter. And essentially, a lux meter measures uh, the luminous lux or the amount of light passing through, through something as based on lumens per square meter. So I, I bought this lux meter dirt cheap online. And uh, I found out that they should always have fresh batteries. When the batteries get bad, it gets really wonky, which is something I didn't realize. Also, uh, you shouldn't take it outside and point at the sun because there's a lot of lumens coming from that sun. So I took a lux meter and I mounted it on the inside of this lid. And this is just a foam pad on the inside of the lib, lid uh, with the lux meter positioned in the center. And then underneath that, I have a piece of felt and I cut a hole that was basically the size of a text box and lined up with the text box when you put the card directly on the felt. That hole goes down into this box and inside of this box there is an LED light. Uh, it is a 75 watt equivalent bulb, but I don't know how many lumens it is off of the top of my head. There's also a parabolic reflector uh, made out of aluminum in there, basically to capture more light and channel it towards the center area. Uh, the light is uh, a standard 120 volt light. And although I have quite a bit of skill when it comes to fabricating something out of wood, I just basically threw this thing together with hot glue. So there's not a lot to it. So you would take the card, put it on here, line up the text box, take the top, and usually just pushing that down is plenty. But I put these uh, latches in place so you could lock it down in place. But just pushing it down was giving me consistent results. Uh, I took this terror. This terror is the the basically the standard card. I wrote a 4.3 on it. That's how many lux I would see when I put that terror in this setup. And when it doesn't give me that reading, uh, there is a, a switch or a, a screw on the back of that to adjust the sensitivity. And I would adjust the sensitivity and basically reset it so that it was reading the correct number of lux. So the terror acted as my standard, but with this setup, no one is going to have this exact setup. I don't have exact specifications for this setup. So all of the numbers that I'm going to give today that you're going to see are all, they're arbitrary and they're, they're not to be taken in a vacuum. They're to be taken in comparison with the other numbers that I'm showing here. But if you're curious, uh, if you take this Lux meter and you put it over the top and you just measure without a card in between here, it's about 1,691 Lux. And all of the cards that I measured from the, the worst transmittance of light, which would be, uh, let's find it, Folk of the Pines. That had the worst transmittance of light of anything that I tested. I think it was around 2.1, but I'll show the picture. Uh, or the best transmittance of light. Uh, that would be Alloy Mirror. Uh, this guy was around 9. So you're, you're measuring just small. Uh, luxes as compared to the actual total lux of this setup. Uh, but even between one set it can vary a lot. Song of the Damned also from the same set of Folk of the Pine. Uh, I want to say it was an 8. Uh, so basically four times of the light transmitted through it. But even though that sounds like a lot four times, if you look at the fakes, the fakes are transmitting a lot less light. So for early sets, white cards transmitted the most light followed by Artifact, Black, red, blue, and finally green transmitted the least amount of light in early sets. Uh, later on, basically once you get into the, the modern uh, frames, uh, that order changes up a little bit. Red cards transmitted the most light, followed by artifact, green, white, black, and finally blue. So blue kind of stays at the bottom, but green does take a flip and move more towards the top in more recent sets. And that, that's good to know. Uh, like I said, if you're comparing cards, comparing by set is important, comparing by card color is also important. So let's just fire this thing up real quick. Uh, you turn it on and there's a lot of light that comes out of there. I call this the the glory hole in reference to the the glass blowing term where they have a furnace with a hole in it where you put the the glass in order to render it molten. Uh, basically you don't want to look into it. It kind of reminded me of that in that way. So I'm going to put the the most transmitted card on here from uh, Ice Age 
and uh, I have pictures that I'm uh, that I showed previously and these pictures that I'm going to show right now uh, basically I set the camera aperture and the ISO and the, the shutter speed identical in all these pictures so you're comparing apples to apples uh, basically if a picture looks more bright than the next picture it is more bright in real life so there's not a lot of light coming through this. Let's let's shift the whole rig over here. Come over here, drop this thing down. Uh, not a light, a lot of light coming through it. If I turn off some lights, uh, it'll become more apparent that there's light coming through there. So let's do that, and let's turn off the other light over here. So you should be able to see now. There's plenty of light coming through there. Uh, whereas if we compare it to the folk of the pine, which let the least light through from Ice Age, uh, definitely a lot less light. And also you should be able to see a little bit of the texture. This has more of a modded texture, whereas the Song of the Damned had more of a smooth texture. Uh, they varied all over the place. One of the interesting things was from Alliances, I found two cards, and this is some interesting. If you look at that, you see there's a region over here that is darker, a region over here that is lighter. That's something that I've seen in rebacks before, and I didn't mention this to this point, but usually in a reback you're looking for a difference that would be caused by the gluing or the, the sanding down process. And this actually looks, if I didn't know better, like a reback, which is hilarious because who would reback one of these, right? I mean, uh, what is this? Inheritance from Alliances. No one's rebacking that card. So th this whole process of uh, testing these cards and this setup takes quite a bit of time. I was doing three cards a minute, so you know, you, you gotta say I've spent hours and hours and hours on this. And what I've done is I went through every set that I had access to and measured at least three cards. Uh, then I took several sets and I measured over a hundred cards, twenty cards of each color, you know, including artifacts and lands when they were available. Uh, so I did lots and lots of cards on this thing, and uh, you know, unfortunately I wasn't able to come up with real hard numbers like I like to have. Uh, what, what I did find though was uh, there are ranges. I found, like I've said, that uh, certain colors transmit more light. I found that it depends on the set. And like I mentioned before, I found that there's different grains and uh, patterns that you see that could be markers to say something is authentic or fake. So th those are all good points that come out of all of this. Uh, one of the more interesting things also is I did uh, revised and I went through and I did commons, uncommons, and rares because those come from different sheets and it doesn't appear that the rarity affects the amount of light transmitted so you can compare a common to a rare. And finally I went through with uh, Siobhan Dragons up the yin yang from 4th edition uh, and measured all of these. And interestingly enough, they all varied, but they were within the range of all the other red cards from 4th edition. So that red, just one single card gave that same gamut of uh, transmittance that every other red card gives. So that says it's very consistent even across rares or printings based upon the set that it's coming from. From here, I'm just going to go into the spreadsheets and look more at the numbers. And then we'll come back at the end for a quick wrap up. So I'm kind of putting this monologue together here at the end of my editing process. I uh, hadn't expected to show so many of my charts and graphs throughout the, the video itself, but that was a good place to put them so you weren't just watching basically a box sitting there or watching cards sitting on a table. So I'm just going to kind of go over some of the details that I think I missed earlier in the video and also in the wrap up after this. So. One of the interesting things was while we're focusing on this sheet, I had taken three cards from each set and tried to go in chronological order from Alpha all the way through to Eternal Masters and tried to look at what color the card was, the amount of light passing, and also the texture, which I hadn't initially looked at, but it was something that I saw during my screening. And it wasn't until I did this and started to do this kind of scattershot, um, wide approach that I started to see some, some of these things emerging like uh, later sets having these, these distinct textures, these snakeskin textures, vertical lines, scales, modded kind of appearances. And these were things that I wasn't seeing in early sets. So these seem to be decent tells for uh, spotting fake cards if you're seeing these kind of internal textures. That is, if you're passing light at all. So obviously you're not going to walk around with this rig. And what, what the takeaway from all this is going to be is that 
if you actually have a flashlight that's bright enough to see through cards and you practice with it and you know what you're looking for, it's something you can bring with you easily and you can check cards on the floor or wherever you are. Another thing with this uh, portable rig, originally what, what I'd done is I took a, a, a plastic card holder and I cut a hole in the front and the back and the hole in the back was centered so that you could take a flashlight and it would kind of slide into place and the hole in the front was exactly the size that it needed to be for the lux meter so it was basically just one piece of plastic that could be affixed to a flashlight and you drop the card into the holder and you could test it on the spot now originally I, I had coated this in like foil to try to prevent extraneous light but that wasn't an issue so you, you could make something pretty similar and uh, make it considerably more portable than the rig that I had. But for the, the sake of getting consistent numbers and accurate uh, using the Terror as a standard, uh, I, I definitely relied on this rig. And that's why I'm not really focusing on what the numbers are, but what the trends are in terms of what was brightest, what I saw between the sets. And like I've said over and over, the big takeaway, Cards from the same set and the same color are good for comparing to cards of the same set and the same color, even if they're different cards, even if one's a rare and one's a common. So I, I just wanted to kind of bring that all back up to the forefront here, uh, since it's a good spot to do that. And now I'm just going to go into just th this final wrap up and compare a couple authentic cards to a couple fake cards. And hopefully some people can get a good take home takeaway message from all this and find something useful in all of this. And what would be great is if someone actually developed a rig and made blueprints for it, something reproducible, and published these guidelines for, you know, what kind of ranges to expect and also what kind of patterns they're seeing in cards. Because there's definitely a large unexplored section here. I only did... 10, 15 sets in any kind of depth, you know, a couple hundred cards per set. So there's definitely a lot more exploration that needs to be done, but this is definitely something that can be taken a lot deeper than just putting a flashlight to the back of a card. One thing that I forgot to do that is basically the crux of all this is to compare some fake cards to authentic cards using this method. So we're going to take this fake time twister, put it on here, and basically you take the top part, push it down, and then you look at the amount of light transmitted. In this case, 0 0.02 lux. And then you take a legitimate card from that set. We'll put a pirate ship on here. We'll put that in place, line it up, bring this down, and look at that. 4.6 lux. That is a huge difference. That is saying that this is letting, what? Uh, 23 times more light through it than the other card completely on a different level uh, let's go with the pact of negation so uh, throw this on here this is the authentic one 4.3 lux and then throw the fake one on here and again this is the the seller that said hey my cards passed a light test hundred percent you will not find a better light test card and 0 0.02 lux garbage completely and totally off its game doesn't even count uh let's go berserk fake and again these feel wrong and they look wrong if you look you know what to look for uh, 0 0.00 0 0.1 so you know again this is completely ignoring any kind of other senses that might be telling you hey this card looks wrong uh and just focusing on uh, 1.5 so green cards like I said have the the least transmittance so it's not as huge of a difference but there's definitely a, a big enough difference there to say this is fake so again the, the purpose of all this is to just say there are some quantitative ways that you could go about this if you dug into this and you pulled them out uh, this specific rig you could duplicate it and you could make ranges and say that these are the acceptable ranges and that would work. Um, but the fact of the matter is that with my rig, I don't have an identical blueprint that I can pass out. So this wouldn't work as it is, but the method itself is legitimate and could work.